Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, on this little episode, I think first of all, we're going to feed the koi, and then we're going to go onto the bench, because I've emptied out that really old paladarium, that one we've had going now for a good couple of years, I would have thought. Pete in there was gone, it was a little bit, all the nutrients had gone out of it, and I thought, shall I replant it, or shall I clean it out and do something different? So I'll spin you around and I'll show you what I've done. Right, what I've done, here you are, I've got to have the coffee in the morning. There you go, there it is, all cleaned out. If you remember a long, long time ago we made this and uh, really enjoyed making it. And we had that lovely little paludarium in there. And uh, because now we've got the big paludarium over there, I thought we'd do something a little bit different and give this a little refresh. Now what I thought of keeping here, guys, is some red crabs. I'm going to make a little crab island, okay? Um, now, a lot of people, when they keep these little red crabs, they make the mistake thinking that they're just fresh water, and they're not. They're actually a brackish water. They will live in fresh water, but they don't do so well, okay? The best thing to do is put them into some brackish water, which will do. Now, what I've got here... Oh, I forgot to feed the fish. They're all waiting for me. Look. Come on, then. Look at the colours on these guys. Come on, then. Come and have some food. It's first thing in the morning. Look at that. And they're all up for their breakfast. Waterfalls trickling away nicely. Millions of filter worms on there. Look, if you can have a look. Those little dark things. I don't know if you can see those, but they're all filter worms. Creepy looking little guys as well. And my picture's falling down. Never mind. They're all happy having their breakfast. Yes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a little crab island, I think we'll call this one. But I'm going to have to work out a way. Now, if you're wondering what the triangle bit is in the middle, basically the bench is a little bit bowed because we had the big bench tank on it. That one there, a long time ago, and it bent the top. Now, I've got other tanks on here. We've got the cherry shrimps, which have exploded. We've seen those before. And some of you guys want an update on the little goldfish. So I'll give you some uh, quick little shots of these guys as well while we're here. Look at that, they're coming on well. No colour in them as yet, because I've got some dark ones in there, but they're putting on some size. This as well. You can see them swimming around, having a feed. On their flake food now. Got to give them a water change today as well. Anyway, I'm jumping around all over the place this morning. I think I might have had too many coffees. Right. Yes, this is in the middle, just a, as a support, okay? Because I've got a slight little bow in there. As you know, the bottom of this is a light blue. It's the same acrylic as I made the base with. And we made this stand as well, if you remember, with one of those IKEA grow lights on, which are fantastic, which really keep those plants growing well. But what I was thinking of doing, I've got another piece of acrylic tubing here. And what I want to do is I'm going to put that in the middle somewhere. I think I might have to cut it down a little bit lower on my table saw, which is down here. Still got the cover on, um, but I might cut it down just a little bit lower so we can have like an island in the middle with some nice plants and stones on. I've got a heap of dragon stone down there, which I think I might put around the outsides here, just so the crabs can come up out of the water. We'll have a nice sandy substrate in there, which they like, some brackish water in there. But I've got to work out a filter system and the heating system. So. I'm going to have to go down, pen and paper. Yeah, I've just decided to do this first thing this morning, so um, that should be a lot of stopping and starting. But that's where I'm going so far. So I'm going to cut that down, maybe cut it down just a little bit higher. But I'll show you all these little bits as we go along, okay? Right, okay guys. We have a small ring now. And a bigger one. Just get all that off of there. And now that is going to sit just nicely inside there like that. That looks a bit better. A bit better for size. It's a little bit marked up. This is from a recycling place that I managed to get this from a couple of years ago now. We made all the jellyfish tank and everything else out of. If you're unfamiliar with them videos guys, pop back in my playlist and have a look and you can see how I made the old jellyfish tank and this and other tanks as well that we've uh, we've made 
Now I'm going to hide that. I put the heater in the back there because I thought we could hide that somewhere. Now with the red crabs, you've got to watch out, or with any crabs, they're amazing escape artists. So you've got to really be careful because even a little table like that, they'll be up and you'll find them dried out on the floor in the morning and um, and you'll lose them. So it's really important. If you're doing these in a square tank, make sure you cut some little bits of plastic for the corners on your silicone because they'll climb up the silicone and they'll be out. So you've got to put little triangles in the corner just to stop them from getting out or you could put a net on there or something like that to stop them, okay? But like I was saying, these little guys are brackish water so um, they live in like the estuaries where the sea meets the, the fresh water and that's where they breed and that, that's, that cycle goes on again as well. So when they all their eggs go out onto the uh, into the sea, they mix in with the plankton and then they come back later on, just like Amano shrimps. So um, what am I going to do now? I'm completely lost now. But I think what I'm going to do, I've got to, I want to try and keep this a captive body in here. Because what I want to do is I want to plant this up. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to plant it up with yet. But I'm going to actually glue this to the base. So this is going to be completely separate to the outside. So we're going to have to make a little filter and everything to go at the back here. So we can hide that away. So we've just got all the front area there. We can have some nice plants, I think, growing out the top. Somewhere where the crabs can come out onto the land and have a little chill out under the lights if they want to. And... Um, chat with their mates so I think what I'll do is I'll take that coating off of here which is a lovely and satisfying thing to do and then I will glue the base on so I'll get you ready on the bench down below here and um, and then we'll glue him up okay right okay guys I've just cut it to size and I've just the camera battery ran out so I just have to charge it up again but I've just run my little needle across there full of full of the adhesive which is the RS which I use this one here RS Pro that's great stuff for uh, and you just let that leach in and that'll go around and you'll see it go nice and clear all the way around I've got this breeze block on the top because where it was on the top of the bench it went slightly concave like that so I've got that big breeze block on the top now to press down on that glue and that will fuse that together and make it really really strong now it won't let it flex because we got that extra ring in there hello spud what are you doing spud hello spud go on in go out of here you'll get you'll be stoned on the fumes come on in let's go right that's old spuddy put back into the house he does like to join in but he likes to stick his nose everywhere and that won't be good for him breathing that stuff and he'll be sleeping all afternoon um right so that's done that's ready to be set now that's that's going off nicely so i'll get back to you when that's dry and we're back up on the bench and we'll go on from there right okay guys that's all in place now everything's nicely glued up really really strong we're back on the bench again now i've got a little pump here which i'm going to use I got this from one of the pets at home tanks, very cheap starter tank for kids. Oh, let me get my fingers out of the way of the camera. And um, it comes with these two little sponge filters which fit inside that little case there. Now what I'm going to do is in my coral room I've also got some sponge filters. So I'm going to cut some cycled sponges that I've already got going at that size and I'm going to put them in. So we'll have a little cycled filter already. I've got the, the shrimps on the, gay, on the go as well. We've got some cryptos in there as well, some uh, ball carrii. Those are the ones I'm using. Now these little guys are actually okay in brackish water, but I've just bought them at the shop and they were quite covered in algae in the system. They had some hair algae on them and different things. But what I've done is I've thrown them in there and as you can see, these little guys are gonna go to work very, very quickly. They've left everything else and they're on there and they're going to pick every little bit of algae off of those. So I'm going to let those little chaps do their thing. Right, okay guys, I've got to do a nice little water test now. Those shrimps didn't have to clean up those, uh, those little cryptos in no time at all, eh? Right, so what we've got to do now, my this silly 
phone of mine. I've got to get an adapter for it, so if my volume goes up and down, I do apologise. But I can't fit a new, my old jack microphone into this phone. So they've gone all jackless now, so um, I'll have to get one of those little wireless or Bluetoothy type things to work it out. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to get my RO tester. I'll rephrase that, my RO tube. And because we've glued this in place, I'm going to have to do a water test because this is going to be fresh water in here while watering the plants, and that is going to be brackish water in there, okay? So I'm going to make sure that one doesn't leak into that one or vice versa. So we'll do a quick water test. Looking good so far. So I'll leave that fill up nicely. Uh, sorry, I've filled it up nicely now, so we'll just wait. I'll give it five minutes just to make sure nothing starts leaking out around into this side. And then what we can do is I'll drain that back out. Well, actually, I'll just leave that in there because I'll put some peat in there later on, and that will. Um, soon absorb that water for the plants for getting them growing. In fact what I might do actually is to put a little bit of stone and some bits of stone in there allow for some drainage as well. I'll put some gravel in there which I've got kicking around somewhere so I'll get back to you when I've got that. It leaked. <laughs> anyway I've got some I fixed it now I put some more some more sealing around there giving it an hour. I've retested it, re-dried it and now it's all good to go. So what I've got in here is for some drainage, I've got some small pumice which I'm going to put in here now. I like as a nice little layer of um, of drainage for the plants. So we can put that around here. That's all going to be hidden underneath the peat. And obviously when we put some rocks around the outside you're not going to see any of that from the inside because that's going to be all camouflage with the plan that I've got in mind so um, right so that's done right I think the next plan is now is to put some peat in the middle and get that nicely packed in there ready for the plants which I haven't even picked yet but we'll shoot off down the garden centre and pick up some nice little plants to go in there and then we'll plant that up so I'll get the peat in now just normal organic compost I'm going to use, sorry. Um, just the stuff you buy down the any of the garden centres. Just make sure it's, all, it's organic and there's no added fertilisers and stuff like that in it because of obviously we've got the water with the crabs in next door. We don't want any pollution in there or anything like that which is going to, which is going to hurt our little mates. So we're going to get some nice organic compost to go in there. And uh, I think I've got some outside actually. Okay. Let's get this stuff in. I don't think there's going to be enough, but we're going to put some uh, some other plants in there, which is going to have peat on as well. So, or I might pick up another little bag. We'll see. Not quite enough, but never mind. Just move that around. Oh yeah, we've got some nice soil in there now. So we'll get a, a bit more soil and a few plants and then we'll carry on. Well, actually what I could do, actually I've got some sand which I've got from uh, the river down by me, which is a lovely soft sand, which, which these guys love to root around in, um, in the mud, straining it through their little mouths, picking up bits of algae because they're omnivorous and um, they will eat mostly anything you put in there. So uh, they can have a good little mooch around through there on the rocks. So what I'll do is, I'll put this sand in now, I've got it down here, if you can see it, I've got it down there, all ready to go, I'm going to sieve the, the larger particles out, I'll just show you how that works, just get a normal little sieve, and just like your gold panning, just keep rushing it, washing it, sorry, through there, slowly lifting it out, and there you go, you get the fine gravel particulates in there as well, which you can bang off into another bucket there and keep going through it or take some out and once it's clean 
so we can put it all in there, okay? And that's going to be their little hunting ground. Right, I've put the sand in now, just tipped it around and just moved it around with my fingers. We've got a little bit on the front there, but not to worry, we can soon clean all this up later on. We'll have to give it a couple of water changes and things to get some of the, just to clear it up a little bit later on. Always make sure that obviously your, your tank's nice and level on a nice level surface before you do this, guys. Otherwise you'll end up with a, it'll all be tipping in there and tipping inside the inside. Obviously we've got to leave it so high for the crabs so they can't get out. Obviously they're not going to get out because they can't get any purchase anywhere all the way around there or on this side. Sorry, they will get purchase on that side because the stones are going to be around that side to allow them up onto the island in the middle um, so they can come out and do some sunbathing. So that's nearly done. Right, what else are we doing? Okay guys, I've just got one of the crypts out. And as you know, when they come from the shops, they always come in these little black containers with that foam little insert or sort of cotton wool insert which holds the roots, okay? Now, these plants aren't going to do very well long term just stuck in there. They need to be put into a substrate. So we have some, a nice root system on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'll show you how I do it in a bit, but I'll put, I'm going to put some peat into a bag, some compost, sorry, just like that, into a bag, a clear bag, put the plants in, tie it up around, make a nice little ball of compost for it to let the roots grow into, okay? Probably leave it in there, just to add a weight to keep it down, jam it in amongst the rocks, and it'll just give it that little bit of extra nutrient that it needs in the water, okay? We don't need a lot. We can pierce the bag with a few holes as well. That'll let that water go through. Now, these trips, like I said before, are okay in brackish water, okay? So, um, they're not going to harm at all. Java moss is another one, okay, which we're going to put some on the top because that's going to be draping very, very slowly around the edge. Like that, okay? Just, just lifting over onto the stones. That's how I'm going to do that. That's going to be a top cap for that later on. So I think what I'll do is now, I'm going to make some... Put the dragon stone in here as well, some nice bits. So we're going to make a nice little island now of stone going around there, okay? Right, okay guys, little plastic fish bag I've got there. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of a compost into that bag like so. Hopefully this camera's keeping focus. Put the bag inside like so. Right, okay guys, that's what I do. I just put it in the bag of peat like so. Cable ties around there. And then pierce a few holes amongst the bag. That will stop the uh, stop that compost escaping, okay? And then obviously the leaves and stuff can grow out the top. We can absorb the nutrients through the water and, and through the peat as well. So we can put that... Plate that in amongst the rocks, just like so, and then cover it all, and then it'll all stay nice and out the way and hidden, okay? Okay guys, I've got all the rocks ready now, just got one in place there at the front. What I did is I set the inner ring just a little bit further back to give us a more, bit more room on the front edge. We're going to put the filter and everything at the back, and the current's going to just keep swirling around and keeping that all nice, okay? So... I think what I'll do now is I'm going to set it up how I want to, how I want it to be, and I'll get back to you when it's done. Right, guys, there you go. We've got them all in. The rock work's done. I've just given it a quick spray with some water to keep the leaves nice and moist, and I've just leveled that sand out a little bit as well. So you can see what we're doing and how we're going about it. Now then, we've got this little filter system here, like I said it was one of those small ones, one of these very small ones from Pets at Home if you're in the UK, if not you can always find them around the place, very very simple little pumps, basically that just clicks on there like that, and we can put that inside the tank at the back, and that's going to keep that current moving nicely, all the way around in a circle to keep everything nice and refreshed and filtered out okay i've got the i've got the sponge 
in the coal room so I'm going to go and cut that I've got a heater as well which is on the bench that's going to go in the back as well it's just going to lay across the back because you're not going to see that I can hide that with a couple of stones and that water will keep swirling around keeping everything nice and temperature wise so that's all going to be good we'll get that in in a minute so when I've got that in and the filter in we'll fill it up but before we fill it up I better get some plants I've just put some more peat in the back there I found a bit more in my garden in a bag and um, so now we're up to level so I think now we'll go and get some nice plants and plant it up and then we can fill him up okay guys I've been down the garden centre picked up a nice little fictus little fig plant up there we've got a nice little fern here and another different species of fern there which obviously they're like house plants just bog standard house plants I've got a nice piece of stone in the back there and some java moss around the edge because java moss when that lips into the water that's going to be okay that's going to be okay with that slightly brackish water okay as are the crypts as well so I think what I'll do now is I'm going to actually fill it up and then we can get the filters going and everything else still got the filter down here haven't put that in yet the heater it's just laying and sucked to the back going across I'm going to put the heat to this side so we have a nice little current blowing around and that will keep everything nice and warm okay so let's get this guy filled up right okay guys there it is all full up I think that looks quite good actually everything's in place just got to keep that java moss just low. I've lowered it down because what I've been doing, I've been drip acclimating the crabs, which are down there, with some of this water because they've been in fresh water. So obviously they're going to go into the brackish water. So I've been drip acclimating them in for the last couple of hours and um, just replenishing the water. So they're up to temperature down below and they're acclimated now to this water. Now what I was saying about the about this is you've got to watch out with this that it doesn't wick into the water and then start siphoning that salty water back into the set that middle section some of the crypts there are a little bit a little bit worse for wear they're adjusting to their new surrounding so they're looking good everything's looking good so i think what we should do now is get our little friends out i've got them in a little tank down below we've got seven in total and we'll put them in the tank, I'll give you a close-up of them and then we'll see what they make of their new little house. Right there you go guys, here's the crabs. Look at those little guys. I think they're fantastic. Now, one thing I will say with crab, I've kept these guys before, you've got to be careful with aggression. Now, with the paludarium that I created here, we've got lots and lots of hiding spaces where they can get away from each other now they reckon around one male to three females I've got about three females and I think they, well I'm not sure actually you can see them already there they're little bickering away sword fighting with each other punching each other and they're just showing their dominance now they're not too too bad but they can get quite aggressive with each other and another thing is is keeping them with um, with fish as well okay any slow moving fish these are predatory and they will attack quarries smaller other, other fish or if you've got a fish that's not well they'll be on it and they will they'll kill it okay so you've got to be careful with them so that's really the main concerns with these crabs is escaping and um, and being predatory and they can be quite destructive as well but in here I think they're going to love it They've got lots of places to go, lots of little things, and little hideouts. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to grab one of these little guys. They'll probably end up nipping me, but let's put one of these little guys just up here. Oh, there he goes. He's in there already, look at that. Where are you off to, mate? He's fighting with the crypts. Everything.
Look at that. He'll just be getting to, used to his new surroundings. I think what I'll do is I'll put them all up on the top and then we'll have a nice little look at them. Well, <laughs> that didn't go to plan. <laughs> I'll put them in there and within a matter of a split second they had all legged it off and hidden apart from this guy here. Oh, and maybe another one down behind the rocks there. Look at that. But I'm sure as time goes on they're going to start coming out for the food. I won't feed them for a couple of days and then I'll start leaving some little tidbits around down in the front by the caves here with a little weight on them so they can't run off with them and I'll get some better footage of them coming out and feeding for you okay because they're going to come out the water and they're going to be on these rocks and it's going to be nice to see but obviously they are quite skittish as all crabs are they want to hide and get away from uh, any predation or anything like that I think we've got another one up here hiding under there somewhere aha there you are hello little friend you're up on the island here and he's gone right so we got three there's seven in total fantastic look at that You like that little one series build of the little crab island and I'll give you regular updates on this tank with little feedings and different things may try on the idea of adding a couple of little small other things in there not sure what yet maybe a couple of nerite snails we may have them get them guys breeding in there as well because it's salt, salty water brackish water which they breed in so that'll be another interesting little sideline for this tank as well 
And if you're not subbed to the channel, guys, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for up and coming videos. That way you won't miss any videos when I post them. And as always, you're all stars. Love you loads. Take care. And I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now.